Hello, my name is Alona Frieden, and I am here as a member of the Medical Advisory Board of the Face Syndrome Community and as a physician expert to talk to you about facing a new diagnosis of face syndrome. I'm really excited to be able to participate in this webinar. And as you'll hear, most of my comments are going to be directed toward families who have a young child with face syndrome. Now, you may be watching this as an older teen or adult who has just recently gotten this diagnosis, but that's a less common scenario, and so most of my comments will be about young children with face, although the comments I make are relevant to older individuals as well. First of all, what is face? Face was defined about 20 years ago by me and others um, using an acronym. And an acronym is basically the idea of using the initial letter of various words to create a separate word, which in this case is face. And face, as it was defined, refers to, as you can see here, posterior fossa, hemangioma, arterial, cardiac, and eye. And posterior fossa referred to abnormalities which are relatively common in the brain. Hemangioma, most patients, virtually all patients with face have hemangiomas. Arterial anomalies, which are anomalies of the arterial circulation, usually of the brain, but also other places. Cardiac abnormalities, heart abnormalities of the heart and also the aorta, and eye abnormalities. And as you'll hear, this list um, only partially helps to understand this condition. So what is a syndrome? Well, really a syndrome varies, but its definition, uh, a syndrome is just a group of signs or symptoms that consistently occur together and are not a random event. So many of you have heard of other syndromes, such as Down syndrome. This is not Down syndrome. A syndrome really, again, just refers to a constellation of a group of signs or symptoms, things that one can visibly see or symptoms that can occur um, that are not a random event. So one of the questions that comes up right away if face is suspected is, how do we diagnose it? Well, we have come up with a standard set of evaluations, which we feel are important to define whether or not a person has face. Um, this includes a history and complete physical examination, an evaluation by a cardiologist, including an echocardiogram. And I want to say here that this might be the most important first thing to do, because certain heart problems in young infants would mean that propranolol, which is a medication used very commonly to treat hemangiomas, couldn't be used initially if there are heart problems that are, that are too severe to tolerate propranolol. So this is something that we'd like to do right away to make sure that there are not serious heart or aorta problems. The next thing on the list is generally an MRI and MRA, which are imaging techniques uh, of the head and neck. And this for a younger child or an infant often requires a brief general anesthesia. We want you to know that there's no radiation exposure with MRIs and MRAs. But it's the test that most often tells us whether or not a person has face. Uh, so this is very important because the most common abnormalities in face are abnormalities of the circulation of the brain and major blood vessels in the neck. We also recommend an eye examination done by an ophthalmologist. And usually the ophthalmologist will need to dilate the eyes to see whether or not there are abnormalities. They really need to get a good look. And then the other tests that might be done would vary depending on individual cases. So the main workup is as I've already described. All right, you've been told that your child or you have face. So what, what happens next? Well, first of all, I want to tell you some lessons that I feel like I've learned over the last uh, 20 years about this condition that might be helpful to you. Lesson number one, take a deep breath. This is kind of overwhelming, especially for families who have never had a serious or potentially serious illness in their family. And parents often get this diagnosis when a child is very young, a newborn or a very young infant. 
And this in itself is a very difficult time. Uh, it's a very emotional, very joyful time. But when you hear something that might not be happy news, it's very hard. Most parents don't have enough sleep at this time. Mothers who have just delivered a baby often have hormonal fluctuations. So in and of itself, this can be a very tough time. And there's so much information to process. You've never even heard of FACE. Your doctors may have never have heard of FACE. One thing that I've observed over the years is that parents and other family members may react very differently to this information. So one parent will be, we're going to take it on, we're going to, everything's going to be fine, we're going to get through this, and another parent might feel just depressed and very cheerful. And that's normal. It's not the case that everyone is going to react in exactly the same way. So knowing that that's the case, that everyone's not going to necessarily react in the same way is very important to recognize. And if there's no urgent medical issues to address, so for example, if there's not a need for some kind of cardiac intervention, it's important to take a little time to process the information. Get your thoughts together and ask your doctors questions about what you've been told. A second very important lesson is that FACE is not one single thing. FACE is a spectrum. So what I mean by that is, as you saw, the, le the, the letters P-H-A-C-E refer to different abnormalities which can occur in this condition. It describes an association of abnormalities in the skin. But most babies with face and most people with face don't have all of these affected. So most, for example, only 10 to 20 percent will have anything wrong with the eye. Um, about the same percentage will have actual structural brain abnormalities. And it's been our experience that most babies with face will grow up to be normal active kids, though they may have medical issues to deal with along the way. So important not to go to the absolute worst, most uh, terrible case scenario of my child is going to be permanently disabled. This is not likely to be the case, even if your child does have face. There may be issues to figure out, problems along the way. And one thing that it does for us is to highlight that there are certain vulnerabilities that we need to look for. And uh, being aware of that is helpful, but I, I think it's very important not to go to the worst case scenario um, and think, oh my God, there's something wrong with this, there might be something wrong with that, but to really just try and systematically figure out where we see issues together with the medical team. Lesson number three, and this is so important, you are not alone. Your doctors may or may not have heard of FACE. It is not a common condition, but it is not super rare. There is not just one doctor in the world who knows how to take care of this. There are centers of excellence, there are doctors who have had a lot of experience with this, um, and that's helpful. There are also many families who have been through what you are now going through. The FACE syndrome community, which was started by parents of, of children with FACE, is here to help. So it's also the case that you may feel uncomfortable because your doctors don't know much about this, but they can help to steer you to doctors who do, or if they can't, the FACE syndrome community can. This webinar and others like it will be very helpful to you. The Facebook page of the FACE syndrome community, which only affected um, members and families can belong to, is another big help. So please turn to your community to help you through this process. And this is a web shot, a screenshot, excuse me, of the FACE syndrome community. Um, and their website is extremely useful information site for learning about this condition and also about learning about future research and current research. Lesson number four is that we don't know the cause of FACE, but we are looking. Um, and we have um, funded investigators, such as Dr. Don Siegel, who is also on the Medical Advisory Board, who are looking to figure out what causes FACE. We don't, we, well, one thing we do know is that we have no evidence that parents of face patients did anything to cause this condition. It does not appear to be inherited, so it's not something likely to be passed down through a family. And what we think is that it's some kind of genetic mutation or mutations that affect blood vessel development and cause hemangiomas and other findings. 
So think of a mutation as a programming error in the body. And it appears in face that perhaps only a part of the body is affected, not the entire body. So this has turned out to be a very hard condition to figure out the cause of, but we have newer ge genetic techniques, and I feel optimistic that we will find the cause in the next uh, several years. Your participation can help. There is a face registry, and what we do is we get uh, genetic information in the form of DNA from either tissue or from parents and children to try and figure out the cause. So please go to the registry and enter your information and the information of your child, which can help us together to find the cause. I wanted to mention something about propranolol, because most children, most infants with face syndrome do end up needing to be on this medication to help to prevent more destructive growth of their hemangiomas, to prevent scarring, to prevent functional problems if there's a problem with the hemangioma in the airway or surrounding the eye, et cetera. And one of the issues of propranolol is that it can lower blood pressure, and if children have very, very um, narrow arteries, we worry about a possibility in the brain, at least, of stroke. So that sounds pretty scary, but what I want to tell you is that most children with face can be successfully treated with rifranolol, and we're aware of only a very small number of patients who are treated where there are complications of rifranolol. We have published guidelines to help doctors decide when and how to use rifranolol in the setting of face, and I've given the reference here. It's also on the face syndrome community website. Um, published there for our members to um, look at and to give to their doctors. So in conclusion, it's important to think about this process as a journey. It's not a journey that you would have necessarily chosen, but it is one that you will be going on. And, and like many trips or journeys, it, it, it will probably feel like you're in a foreign country at times. You have a lot of doctors. You have all kinds of words that you've never heard of. But the most important thing in going on that journey is, I think, to be as optimistic as possible and also to realize that you are not alone. Finding doctors who know about faith can help guide you. Reaching out to others in the faith community with, for their guidance can also be extremely helpful. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this. And thank you to the faith syndrome community for allowing me to participate in this webinar. Thank you.